Hi guys, Olive here, here today to do part one of what will become a three-part nonfiction book haul. For whatever reason, every single library book sale that I've attended or used bookstore that I have walked into over the past few months has had so many great nonfiction books for such reasonable prices that I just couldn't resist. When I finally sat down and counted all the nonfiction books that I've acquired over the past couple of months, I realized it was going to be way too many for one video, and then I finally realized it was going to be way too many for two videos. So as I said a moment ago, there will be three parts to this book haul. I have broken the nonfiction down into three different categories. So there will be a common theme going through each of the three different parts. And then I put a poll out on my community tab asking which type of nonfiction you would like to see first. And an overwhelming majority of you picked the history, culture, literature, and memoir section. So those are the books that we are going to be starting with. So starting out with memoir, the first book I picked up was In the Sanctuary of Outcasts by Neil White. This is the memoir of a man who served time for bank fraud in a less than ordinary prison. This federal prison in rural Louisiana was home of not just white collar criminals, but also the last community of people affected by leprosy in the continental United States. It sounds like such a fascinating story and definitely one of those instances where the truth is stranger than fiction. My husband Tony and I just recently went to a talk that Adam Savage of Mythbusters fame recently gave here in Pittsburgh. And as a part of the price of admission, you got a copy of his newest book, Every Tool's a Hammer, Life is What You Make It. The talk that Adam Savage gave was hands down the best one that I have ever attended. And I have attended some really great ones here in Pittsburgh, I should say. But it was so entertaining and so moving. He considers himself a maker. He has worked in special effects. He did so for years before he was on Mythbusters. And he still creates things. He's a huge proponent for making things as a way to express your creativity, whether those things end up on a movie set or whether they end up on Etsy, or in my case here on YouTube. This is his memoir and could probably also be considered his manifesto on making. I am beyond excited to read this one and will probably give it a review. Another book I picked up as part of this haul that's really just a collection of thoughts from a really cool person is No Time to Spare, Thinking About What Matters by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is one of the very few books that I actually picked up new as part of this haul. Most of these are used books. This is a collection of essays containing insights from the late great science fiction writer Ursula K. Le Guin. I've actually never read any of her fiction considering I'm not the biggest sci-fi reader, but have you ever just had one of those feelings about a book that you're going to love it completely divorced from what the book is actually about? Because I absolutely feel that way about this book. This next book is actually the second book that has something to do with my husband as part of this nonfiction haul. But just last week, it was my husband's birthday. And as a part of our celebration, we went to a comic book store since he has been super into comics lately. And while I was browsing, while he was taking his time browsing the store, I came across this next book that looked way too good to pass up. It's called Chainmail Bikini the Anthology of Women Gamers. This is a collection of short comics by 17 different women, all talking about what video games really mean something to them. So from Animal Crossing to The Sims to Magic the Gathering and beyond. I really enjoy playing video games, as I know I've spoken about on this channel before, and I'm really excited to hear what all these different women have to say and to see so many different art styles all in one place. This next book will actually help us transition from the memoir portion of the book haul into the literary portion of the book haul, since it is pretty equal parts memoir and literary biography. That book is The Victorian and the Romantic by Nell Stevens. Katie from Books and Things has spoken so highly about this book. This book is actually the same thing as Me and Mrs. Gaskell. This is just the Americanized version of the title. Apparently we Americans cannot be trusted to know who Elizabeth Gaskell is. This is one of those books that I've been super attracted to recently that is part literary biography, but also part memoir of the author's personal connection to a piece of literature or to an author's entire catalog. This one seems a little bit unique within that genre because it seems like this author connected more to Elizabeth Gaskell's life story, a very specific period of time in her life, versus her works, although I'm sure they had an influence on her as well. I love Elizabeth Gaskell. Her two books, North and South and Wives and Daughters, are among my favorite books of all time. And so I am really excited to read this. Plus, if Katie from Books and Things had the reaction to this that she did, then I just have to read it because her word is gold to me. I personally think she's one of the best booktubers that we have. And I don't say that lightly because I love all of you. And speaking of literary biographies, I also picked one up of the eldest of the Bronte sisters. 
Charlotte Bronte, A Fiery Heart by Claire Harmon. As much as I love Elizabeth Gaskell, as I mentioned regarding the previous book, I don't think I'm ever going to pick up her biography of Charlotte Bronte, because the two had a very close friendship. I think that makes her less than objective in writing about Charlotte's life, and I've heard things about Elizabeth Gaskell leaving things out in order to protect her friend. And while that makes a good friend, it doesn't make a good biographer. But I still want to learn more about Charlotte. I've been really loving her books, and I still cannot get Villette out of my head. I also picked up Jane Austen, A Companion by Josephine Ross. Ever since I finished the last of Jane Austen's novels that I had left to read, Mansfield Park, and had such an amazing experience with it, I've just been in Jane Austen mode. I'm currently reading her biography, but this book is more meant to be a companion piece to her novels to give you additional information about each of them, whether you're reading them for the first time or whether you're using this as a companion piece as you're going through for a reread. The next book I picked up has an extremely wordy title that is called When I Am Playing With My Cat. How do I know that she is not playing with me? Montaigne and Being in Touch with Life by Saul Frampton. I have to admit to you, I picked this book up because of the title, but this is a collection of essays from Renaissance writer Montaigne. I had actually never heard of Montaigne before seeing this book. And then funnily enough, Steve Donahue mentioned him on his channel right after I picked up this book. It's that weird phenomenon that you see something and start hearing about it everywhere. Next up is Why I Read, The Serious Pleasure of Books by Wendy Lesser. This sticker residue is going to haunt my dreams. This is one of the many books on books out there in the market that all of us are always so attracted to. I can only speak from my own personal experience, but I absolutely love hearing about people's connections to books, not even like specific books, but just books in general. It's one of the things that made me fall in love with booktube to begin with. But I'm really interested to hear this author's take. This is a really short one, so I could probably blow through this one in an afternoon. Tangentially related to the previous book is Paper, an elegy by Ian Sansom, and this old school cover is so cool. This is a history of paper in all of its forms and functions, but the blurb makes a very bold claim claim that the age of paper is coming to an end. I looked and this book was published in 2012. I honestly can't remember if that was during that very hysterical and misguided period of time where everyone was forecasting that ebooks were going to slaughter the print book market, which definitely ended up not being the case. And I don't know why anyone ever thought it would to begin with, just because we have digital things doesn't mean it eliminates the need for paper altogether. So I'm interested in what this author has to say, but also bring it on. Then I picked up Jeans, A Cultural History of an American Icon by James Sullivan. This is, as you can probably see, a micro history all about blue jeans. I love wearing jeans. I think it's kind of written into my DNA as an American. I've heard some stories about the creation of blue jeans from various sources over the years, but it'll be really nice to hear the whole story in one place. Moving into the culture part of the haul, I also picked up The History of Jazz by Ted Joya. This is a comprehensive history of jazz music written by music historian Ted Joya. I've read a different book of his, How to Listen to Jazz, which I absolutely loved and reviewed on this channel if you're interested, but I just love jazz music, so so I am really looking forward to reading this and hopefully I will do so before I finally get to visit New Orleans. I also picked up Sargent's Daughters, the biography of a painting by Erica Herschler. Earlier this year I read and really loved really loved being an understatement, a book about a different sergeant painting called Strapless by Deborah Davis. That book discussed the portrait of Madame X, but it also discussed Sargent's career as a whole and also mentioned this portrait. So when I saw that there was an entire biography of this portrait of four little girls, I knew I had to have it. I purchased this next book after hearing Natalie from Curious Reader talk about it. That book is called Bright Earth, Art and the Invention of Color by Philip Ball. This book is all about color. It is the history and the science of the creation of different pigments and dyes that are used not just in paintings, but also in fashion, merchandising, textiles, and chemical industries. I don't know why I am so obsessed with art books considering I don't understand art all that much, but I am, so I'm just rolling with it. And that's why I also picked up Breakfast at Sotheby's, The A to Z of the Art World by Philip Hook. This is an in-depth look at the art world written by someone who has 35 years of experience in the art market. I straight up don't understand the art world or to be completely honest, agree with some of the ridiculous price tags that some of these splotchy things command. 
but I do really enjoy reading books from different perspectives. So I will see what he has to say. And to finish off this first part of my nonfiction book haul, I have four different history books to show you. The first of those is In Spite of the Gods, The Rise of Modern India by Edward Luce. This is a book that I've wanted to read for years, so I was absolutely giddy when I saw this at a library book sale. This book is a glimpse at modern India, particularly its place in the world economically speaking, at least that's my understanding. In college I studied a lot of international economics, and politics and have always found India absolutely fascinating so I am really happy to finally own this one. Then I also picked up A History of the City of Istanbul by Thomas Madden. Istanbul is a city that I would love to see someday, hopefully soon. I do know a little bit about it since I read a book in my pre-booktube days called Crescent and Star by Stephen Kinzer which was really good but I would like to learn more just about the city of Istanbul, its history, its culture, its people. I know this book is going to give me all the wanderlust, but I have really high hopes for it. And the last two history books I have to show you are both on Russian history. The first of those is called the House of the Dead, Siberian Exiles Under the Tsars by Daniel Beer. When you're talking about exile in Russian history, specifically in Tsarist Russia, then you're almost always talking about Siberia. It was basically their penal colony and a giant social experiment of trying to settle new peoples there. And this is an entire history of that practice. And the last book in this haul was sent to me by the great people over at Glagoslav Publications. It's a biography of Vladimir Lenin. A while back they had gotten in contact with me, letting me know that they were going to be publishing a new biography of Lenin and asking me if I would be interested. And somehow, like two years later, they remembered that I expressed interest, which is honestly super impressive. And now that the book is finally here, it looks amazing. It's written by a scholar who focuses most of his work on Lenin, so you know it's going to be comprehensive. I am truly appreciative, Glagoslav. Thank you for not forgetting about me. So that was the end of part one of this three-part nonfiction haul. I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. If you've read any of these books, if you've heard of them, or if you're now interested in reading them after hearing me talk about them, I would also love to hear from you either in the comment section below or anywhere else on social media. All of my links are down in the description box below. What part of the nonfiction haul you would like to see next? Your two options are animals, nature, plants, and food. That's one section, but then also all of the sciences. So let me know which one of those two you would like next. I will be posting that one next month. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.